Coming up next, we're going to be talking with Zach Zamora. And I am so excited about this interview, Zach. First off, welcome to Central Texas Gardener. Thanks for having me. It's really great to have you here. You are an inspired creator of uh, living systems, is one way to describe what you do. Uh, you create uh, really advanced uh, terrariums. You've worked for n the National Aquarium, for example, in Baltimore. And you are now back in Austin, and you're creating living systems here, as well as you've started a, a beautiful vessel company where you create uh, handcrafted pots and bird baths and the like. So we're really excited to have you on Central Texas Gardener. I've got to ask, um, regarding the living systems, the terrariums, I remember when I was in first grade, we used to put them in little... Uh, uh, one-gallon fish tanks mm -hmm. with moss and logs and stuff like that. You take it to an art level. Where did this interest get born? Uh, the interest really started when I was a kid. Um, mm -hmm. There was two things I loved to do. One was build things and the other was just go out and explore. So I would go out and crawl through the culvert and catch a frog or um, flip a log over, find a snake, and bring it back home to my mom. She would be like, <laughs> she would be like, well, you know, what are you going to do with this? And I'm going to keep it. Well, where are you going to keep it? And mm -hmm. that was the fundamental question that got me started in building exhibits. All right. And well, you went to UT and became a zoologist. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Um, that's and great. Then, and from there, I. Uh, I really kind of honed my focus into these uh, tropical ecosystems mm -hmm. along with these amphibians mm -hmm. and it actually paid off and I landed a job at the National Aquarium in Baltimore where I was caring for their uh, poison frog collection. That's awesome and uh, speaking of these amphibians, mm -hmm. you've brought with you uh, one of your living systems Yes. and uh, this, it, it, you have this beautiful explanation of why you got interested in this, the system part of this. Explain that for us. And a little bit about our frog friends over here. Okay, well, the frog friend you saw is mm -hmm. a Dendrobates tinctorius, the dying poison frog. And okay. the reason that I really um, became interested in uh, amphibians held my attention so much is just because they're like little sponges to our, um, to our natural world. They're great indicator species, so, um, and they're dying off. 30% of all the amphibians are threatened. Mm -hmm. um, because of pollution, they basically respire through their skin and they live part of their life in the water. So um, they're very susceptible to sure. contaminants, um, UV radi radiation, um, mm -hmm. chytrid fungus, things like that, um, deforestation. So it was a, it's a real challenge to keep them. And um, just from raising these amphibians, it really taught me uh, how to create an ecosystem, mm -hmm. a self-sustaining, you know little system. Well, in, in this particular system, you have created this magical little world for your our little friends. The, again, the common name for these is the poison dart frogs? Poison dart frogs, yes. Okay, and they come from uh, Central America? Uh, Central and South America, yes. Okay. And they're, uh, it's the species that the uh, native Indians used to poison their, uh, mm -hmm. they would take the frogs and disturb them a little bit and poison their blow pipe, uh, the blow darts, so then they could shoot, you know, food animals, monkeys right. and things like that. Okay. Now you create these living systems not just for museums and aquariums and you know the, the big guys, mm -hmm. but also for individuals, right? Yes, yes. I don't. Uh, I'm working on that. I'm mm -hmm. really. Uh, it's difficult to kind of drive the price down to make it. You really have to be an enthusiast to have <laughs> one of these. But I'm <laughs> constantly, you know, exploring avenues to try to find how I can bring this to the. Uh, the common man and also into hotels and restaurants and lobbies and things like that. You mm -hmm. know? I could see there would be uh, a real market for something as exquisitely beautiful as what you've created here, plus the attraction of the animals themselves is really, really special. Now, um, I know that this is still an ongoing interest and you're, 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 you're continuing to do this, but we have, I want to also talk about the vessels that you're creating okay. because these are really extraordinary, really beautiful, and, and you have kind of a design philosophy behind them. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the design philosophy really behind the vessels is just a, I want to keep it, keep the lines and keep everything simple, but then also uh, do it in a, a sustainable way. Um, mm -hmm. we, we have this beautiful example over here with all these uh, beautiful succulents in it. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, this is this guy I just had uh, underneath one of my uh, little uh, collection of oak trees mm -hmm. on my property, and it's a it's 27 inch vessel, and it is uh, that's the uh, chocolate color. It's mm -hmm. a it's actually an acid stain, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I pour them with two-part mold, and it's a uh, Portland-based cement mm -hmm. mixed with select aggregates. Okay, well, it's really uh, very, very beautiful, 
and again, very natural in terms of the materials that you use. Yes, yes. And obviously, the plants seem to enjoy it just fine. Yeah, they, they do well. And uh, you brought another example. This is kind of uh, it, more in the natural state, so you, people can exactly. see the materials and, 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 and the quality of the construction as well. These are, are, are really designed to last a lifetime. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and tell us a little bit about the other one that you brought, the square well, one here. This is a square vessel, like what you said earlier. Mm -hmm. I basically popped it from the mold, and this is kind of in its raw state. Mm-hmm. You can, it's stripped down to the, the bare essence, but it's exactly. beautiful even as is. I like, yeah, it's my favorite. <laughs> you really? Just yeah, the, the yeah. plain white? I can see why that is, you know. I think there's something about really essential, simple things in the garden that really kind of can be wonderful. And uh, these are, of course, available to folks. And I have to say that um, you also, in addition to making containers, you make some extraordinary uh, other kinds of things for the garden. And I know our own producer, Linda Lamasverda, uh, in her garden, you've created a very special birdbath, for example. And I know this is something that you do as well. Yes. Describe uh, those for us, if you would. Well, I worked with Linda on the project. Um, mm -hmm. I was, she was interested in a, uh, a birdbath, and we were talking about this vessel, but it was way too deep. So we just kind of brainstormed and collaborated mm -hmm. and came up with this design. She uh, shot me a uh, picture of the stand which she, mm -hmm. would, she wanted and um, I kind of played around with the base and ended up making it shallow for birds, bird friendly, but mm -hmm. then also kind of added a little topographical organic element to it. Yeah. And then we really topped it off with the solar panel that um, has a little solar pump in there that uh, attracts, you know, the animals with the water movement. Yeah. And that's so important for attracting wildlife, just having a little bit of movement in there. They notice it so much more and they also, it just seems to be, I don't know, this is a, uh, um, anthropomorphizing here, but they seem to enjoy it. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they actually seem to enjoy it. Well, um, there's so many different cool things we can talk about. Now, I understand that on your own property right now, you have some cool projects as well going. I do. Um, one exciting project that I'm really excited about, I hope to get water mm -hmm. in it before mm -hmm. the summer dead of heat comes, but mm -hmm. it's, it's a natural swimming pool. But instead of using chlorine or salts to filter the water, it's actually living vegetation that does the filtration. Okay, I love this idea. Now, describe how, how this works for the folks at home who might be interested in this idea. Okay, well, you, it's basically two pools in one. There's a deep area that you swim, and because it is deep, the water's a little cooler there. So you pump this water up through this shallow emergent zone where you have all types of plants with uh, low substrate. So they actually, uh, the roots are kind of exposed, and the roots will actually filter the water. Mm -hmm. And um, it works really well. So it's like a gravelly uh, mix. That yes, like expanded clay would be ideal for Okay, that. and so it's like natural filtration. Exactly. And exactly. so no need for chlorine? No need for chlorine, and it's a, uh, no, if you're sensitive, sensitive people, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with chlorines or salts or something like that, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's all natural. That's the thing that spoils swimming for so many people, is jumping in a pool and coming out smelling like chlorine, you know, it's like, yeah, so yeah. this is a very cool idea. And also hear that you have now kind of an outdoor ecosystem that you've created for um, a completely different kind of ecosystem. Not a, a bog land here, but uh, something dry and arid. Exactly. Well, um, the uh, pool we dug, and it was, I live on straight limestone. Mm -hmm. So I took the rocks and I basically built about a two-foot retaining wall. And it was a little lawn, about a thousand square feet, and mm -hmm. I trans, uh, transformed that into more of an arid habitat where it's actually housed to uh, three mm -hmm. African spur tortoises. So it's their habitat. They love it out there. Um, they're from Africa, but it's kind of a similar zone mm -hmm. as um, the hill country. And they eat the grasses and they eat the cactus, and they do really well out there. And, they eat um, the cactus. They're pretty tough critters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They love they love the prickly pear cactus and. Um, they should be, right now they're relatively small, but they'll uh, get about 200 pounds when they're full yeah. grown. Well, I love your story about how a childhood sense of wonder and mm -hmm. an adventure got turned into something where, you know, it, you've been able to, to make a living from that and uh, actually to give us, you know, just the, you said the National Aquarium. Where else can people see some of your work? Um, San Diego Zoo has a lot of my, um, mm -hmm. the children's zoo there, I built a lot of insect exhibits for them. Mm -hmm. One exciting um, exhibit that I finished up for them recently was a leaf cutter exhibit. So it was above and below ground, basically oh, giant cool. ant mm -hmm. farm. So you could watch these leaf Giant ant farm, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. And the, <laughs> you could uh, view the ants, they cut the leaves and they bring them down into right. the holes and you could actually see the fungus, you know, okay. and it was pretty cool. All right. Well, uh, Zach, again, it's been a great pleasure. I think we could hang out all day and visit with you or 
check out uh, your your frog friends over there. But I want to say people can be in touch with you through website. It's on the on the screen right now. We hope people will do that. Variancevessel.com. Thank you so much for being a part of Central Texas Gardener, and good luck to you.